a very good morning dear students so in this lecture session we will have a brief introduction about our subject that is bioenergy technologies so the first question comes into your mind is what is biomass so bioenergy is derived from biomass so how will you define biomass so biomass is defined as a biological material derived from living or recently living organism so that means they will be either a part of a living organism or a recently living organism so in this the term recently is very very important because you know that your crude oil which is used for the production of petrol diesel etc they are also come from plant and animal bodies which was buried a million of years ago by the action of high pressure temperature they are converted into crude oil but they are not considered as a biomass material so this recently living is very very important we will not consider this crude oil or petrol etc as a biomass material and another important thing we have to note down is even though biomass is mostly plant based material they can be applied to animal waste or animal derivative also for example chicken waste beef tallow etc coming from the slaughter house they can also be treated as biomass and can be used for biofuel production and energy production so mostly we will have plant material but it can be animal also and the biomass used for energy purpose we can classify into three categories first one is agriculture residues so as we know the agriculture residues will be the by product or waste generated from the particular agriculture crop like wheat rice sugar cane corn etc and these can be two types the agriculture residues can be two types one is the field residue what is field residue field residue is the material left in the agricultural field itself so while the harvesting this crop they will have some waste in the farm field itself like leaves stem etc so these are the first category that is the field residues but the second one is more important that is process residue what is process residue it is the material left after the crop is processed into useful product like rice husk so while producing rice or in a different in an industry we have we are a different industries for processing rice wheat etc in the rice industry we will have a lot of rice husk coming as a by product similarly in wheat processing industry we will have a lot of wheat straw and sugar cane processing we will get bagasse so in a very crop while processing we will get a lot of waste which is not used for food purpose so that is the second category the second category is more important than first category for bioenergy production and this important thing is this agriculture residues are produced in a cycle of few months to half a year so we will get continuously this biomass in a period of few months or maybe a six month maximum depending upon the crop and the second category is the plantation residue and they are arise from plantations of trees which is used growing for different purpose for example wood we are different wood for paper industry and rubber in kerala we have a lot of rubber estates for producing rubber arachnid coconut trees all these come under plantation residue and in kerala perspective this more than the first category that is agriculture residue is very 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 less because there is not much that of agricultural here but the second category is a predominant one that is plantation residues is 
more in Kerala. And why? Because this is the reason. Plantation trees require minimum input attention. That is, they does not require any continuous watering or uh, continuous pest control or continuous fertilization. But they can be only uh, once in a year we have to take care of them and they will produce these crops continuously. So that is why in Kerala we are more inclined towards this plantation residues. But the third category that is if you are moving to cities or metros, the first two category will not be there. There will not be any agriculture residue. There will not be any plantation residue. But we will have this third category that is municipal solid waste mostly denoted by MSW. So MSW consists of every day-to-day -day items that is discarded by the public. And they can be liquid as well as solid form. The waste will be in either liquid or solid form. And liquid waste mainly coming from kitchen waste, food waste from hotel etc. They have a solid content very very less. That is important thing. In MSW for food waste we will have a solid content of less than 10 percentage. The remaining will be in liquid state. And other than this food waste and kitchen waste, we will have a garden waste, broken furnitures, a lot of plastic waste is also accumulated, then used clothes, footwear, all this will be there in municipal solid waste. And the magnitude and composition of this municipal solid waste will be different from according to location, culture, aspect, etc. So if you are going in, if you are uh, focusing a municipal soil waste of Chennai and municipal soil waste of some other northern India, it will be different. And Kerala municipal soil waste will be another composition. So that will vary from location and cultural as, as practice, etc. Now this is a composition of municipal solid waste. What is the recent composition? We can categorize these components into three categories. So municipal solid waste, we can have three categories mainly. It will have biodegradable or compostable materials. So what is biodegradable footsteps, tree trimmings, all these are biodegradable. We can degrade or decompose it by the action of different bacteria or and same etc. So all these are biodegradable. But then second category we have some recyclable materials that is plastic, paper, glass, metals etc. So that is come under recyclable item. And finally we have inert item. This is very the inert items in good mainly stones, inorganic materials, stones, slit etc which is we cannot recycle or we cannot biodegrade it so we in a you have to an analyze the composition of municipal solid waste before going for energy production from municipal solid waste you have to understand how much percentage of biodegradable material is there in that municipal solid waste how much percentage of recyclables are there and inert material so if the percentage of inert material is very high it is not suitable for energy production because it will have a lot of inorganic material stone sand etc so that is building constructions all these are come under inert material and this is a typical average percentage of these three categories we can see the municipal solid waste in India, this is uh, done by Energy Authority of in Energy Alternative of India. So there, from their data, it can be seen that of almost 50 percentage, there will be biodegradable material. And around 20 percentage, we have recyclable material. 22 percentage, we will get inert. And 8 percentage will be others. So this is a typical composition of municipal solid waste in India.
so that means the segregation is very very important so if you are going for energy production from municipal solid waste first you have to segregate it you have to separate the plastic wood etc that is recyclable material you have to separate the inert material so that is a big problem when going for energy production from municipal solid waste and but the positive thing is we can the, if this is study the thesis done by ranjit in 2012 the composition of indian municipal soil waste is changing from 1973 you can see this in this study from we have three graphs one is first one is 1973 second one 1995 and finally 2005 so he has studied this percentage of composition of municipal solid waste the three categories you can see the positive thing is the compostable or the biodegradable material percentage is increasing so from 40 percentage almost to now it is changed to this 30 years this changed to 50 percentage and recyclable also increasing from 10 to almost 20 percentage and the inert is reducing that is a positive thing because we will not produce any energy from this inert material and it will be a very drawback for power production from municipal solid waste so in the third graph you can see that the inert material is reducing from 50 percentage to around some 30 percentage 20 percent reduction is there so this is only data up to 2005 now it's 2021 so maybe in it has further reduced in this while the, following the trend of this graph we can say we, maybe the inert material will be very very low in today's municipal solid waste and now we are going what is the significance of bioenergy why, why we require bioenergy or what is the current scenario in bioenergy production so this is another source that is international energy outlook by u.s energy information this shows the btu btu british ton of thermal units of energy produced from different source so you can see here a trend a worldwide trend in energy production the main thing is the sub data in 2015 data taken up to 2015 and they are exploiting this extrapolating this graph after 2015 and they are predicting that there will be a considerable decrease in coal so now we are using coal as a major power production mainly in india china etc and they are continuously reducing you can see that the trend in coal is continuously reducing while the petrol and other liquids they are slightly increasing and the positive thing is the power production from renewables they will very sharply increase you can see that after 2015 to 2014 they are predicting that the power production from renewables the green line that will be sharply increase and also the new but the nuclear is not that much increasing so almost a constant so mainly the power production from renewables will sharply increase that is the main prediction from this graph now coming to india so that is a worldwide trend that will be followed what is the energy mix of India? This is very very important. So you are uh, energy students, you must know what is the percentage of energy production coming from different categories. That is the energy mix of India. So this is a data based on Central Electricity Authority under MNRE, based on installed capacity. This is up to 30th April 2017. So you can see that in a power production or energy production for India almost 15 and percentage is coming from coal so 15 and percentage is coming from coal then 13.5 percentage from hydro hydroelectric power plants large power plants work under idle power 
then gas based power plants contribute 7.7 percentage diesel power plant is 0.3 percentage only nuclear is 2.1 and we are focusing on renewable energy so how much is renewable energy power production so you can see that renewable energy production is 17.5 percentage so that number you have to remember so in india the power production up to 2017 april 30 the power production from renewable is around 17.5 percentage now we if we further split that 17.5 where that renewable energy power production comes so mostly from wind so wind is 9.8 percentage wind turbines using wind then solar comes from 3.8 percentage then small hydro power plants so small hydro power plants uh, generated from waterfalls etc come under renewable energy so they are 1.3 percentage now you can see bio power bio power is only 2.5 percentage and waste to power so that is waste material to power is very very less 0 0.03 percentage only so that is the area where we can improve so now the this biopower is only 2.5 percent that energy production from biomass is 2.5 percentage in this 17.5 but there that we can improve by the understanding of the technologies that will convert biomass into energy and the more important thing is in uh, European countries and America etc you no know, Netherlands Switzerland etc they will have a large power plants based on bioenergy maybe one megawatt and more but they have a very good waste management and collection systems biomass collection systems they have a very good transportation system they are very good culture but in India it is not that much possible there is not that much of waste management system so we have to follow the decentralized units so in India it is better to suitable to consider the decentralized waste management system so now we have another category of this that is fuel used in India so what are the fuel used comparing usage of fuel so this session we will see what is the usage of fuel in India so mainly coal we are using so we have first table first column what is the type of fuel we are using second column we have the lower calorific value what is the heat generated by burning that one kilogram of that fuel and the usage what is the million metric ton so it is usage in million metric ton and purpose so you can see coal is mostly in India we are using coal is having a calorific value of 20 and its usage is 420 mega million metric tons per year so we are using 420 million metric ton per year and coal is mainly used for electricity production as well as producing waste he process heat we are using industry process heat for production of steam also so that is the purpose of coal so coal is the first fuel we are using solid fuel the natural gas natural gas we have 50 calorific value very high 50 megajoule per kilogram but its usage is only 12 mmt and purpose we are using natural gas combust natural gas for transport electricity and cooking so we are know that the gale in India gale is using this combust natural gas then diesel and petrol you know the calorific value is around 42 megajoule per kilogram mainly used for vehicle transport heavy vehicle and lower vehicle transport and kerosene also we are using for cooking very low quantity only 12 LPG also you are using for cooking 10 million metric ton and the third last three we are bioenergy that is firewood we are firewood is used widely in india mainly 250 mmt of firewood is used for cooking electricity etc and agro residues 
also we have a lot of potential around 120 mmt of agro residues are there and cow dung in india cow dung is produced in uh, by that third around 40 mmt though that can be also used for energy production so this is this chart represent that even though we are not using this firewood agro residues etc for power production but their quantity is very very high compared to coal and other fuels we are a considerable amount is generated in india and another important thing you have to take care while combustion of biomass what is the difference in combustion of biomass so if you consider the liquid and gaseous fuel like lpg diesel gasoline etc what their combustion is entirely different from solid biomass like coal and etc so in lpg or the combustion liquid petroleum gas combustion occurs in a single phase that is only gaseous phase and in liquid fuels like petrol and diesel we know that it involves the vaporization of that fuel and combustion and in these two cases there will be no residues that is if you burn a petrol or diesel or if you burn lpg there will not be any residues left after the burning but the import in solid fuel it is not the case solid fuel combustion occurs in two stage first this is very important you have to understand the combustion mechanism in detail in by the burning of solid fuel first the volatile gas will release from condensed phase and burn up with oxidants after this phase there will be solid left this after the volatile release stand burn the solid residue left is known as char and it again burns by surface reaction with oxygen diffusing from gaseous phase so this is a two stages that will happen while burning a solid fuel first the volatile gas will released and it will be burned and it, char is formed and again the char will start by the surface burning first phase is normally used as flaming combustion and second phase glowing combustion so these are the two phases of solid fuel combustion flaming combustion and the glowing combustion and finally the inorganic material so every biomass there will be some inorganic material in that it will be left behind as ash so the some ash will be there while after finishing this burning and what is the role of biomass we can see in the previous chart we can see that even though biomass is not usable for use for energy production considerably but it has a huge potential even if it is uh, polluting and inefficient we can use that by proper technique and even the coal the principal fuel used for large power generation they are only produced in the northeastern belt of india so indian coal they we are only produced in northeastern state of india and another drawback is indian gold is having i ash content 45 percent ash content is there for indian gold so some washing procedure is required to bring down this to 25 percentage but in contrary to this so coal is produced only in northeastern state and power production you know we have to transport this coal we have to reduce the ash content but biomass biomass is available throughout the country in one form or other so about we can see about 100 to 120 million metric ton of biomass is available for energy purpose but the main disadvantage of biomass is its low density so that you have to understand the density of biomass is very less is less than water so it is will be around 200 to 500 kg per meter cube so the transportation cost of so that is why the biomass based centralized power plants are not suitable mainly for india larger country like india so if you have any any centralized biomass plant it will not be that much successful because of this reason also 
the density of biomass any biomass it will be less so while transporting the biomass you will have a lot of transportation cost 200 to kilo 500 kilogram per meter cube only its density then what is the possible way so we can increase the density loss and by employing some decentralized industries which will convert this low density biomass into high density pellets and briquettes for example you have rice husk or sawdust this powdered biomass which is a very very low density and by pressurizing this and you by suitable techniques you can convert this into pellets and briquettes so that is the main thing we can do by employing decentralized units of pelletization and briquettization we can convert this into high density biomass so that is an area we can improve and another important recent finding this is also very very important in layman in 2007 he found that the biochar the biochar produced by this uh, biomass and applied to soil will help in improving carbon sequestration so this a lot of research is doing in this area so the biochar produced from biomass will help to improve the carbon negativity of that area or to help the carbon sequestration so these are the importance of biomass why we have to use biomass for energy production so with this uh, we are stopping this introduction section thank you